Hey everyone, welcome to a little overview of our new Dead Sprouts Forest Biome that we just released. We're going to have a look at the example map running within the editor. We're going to go over some of the folders within the content browser and have a look at the outliner itself. So let's get started. As you can see, this is the example map that the biome comes with. Um, you can use this as a base for your own game or just have a look at it to see how we have set up things and... Um, this is actually 100% procedurally generated. None of this was hand placed at all. All of this is based on specific rule sets and layers on the landscape. So let's have a look at the content browser. As you may have noticed, there's like two folders. One is the MW common and one is the Dead Sprouse Forest. Uh, the MW common is shared between all our products. This includes like global material functions, master materials, meshes, and textures. And then within the actual project folder, we have foliage, we have the example map, we have the different materials, the different meshes, we have the procedural setups that spawn all of this, and we have the textures themselves that are used on the different assets. Let's have a look at some of the subfolders. Um, if we click on meshes and open this up, there's a bunch of subfolders. One is called like bushes, um, cover debris, which is like all the little sticks and stuff and needles and whatnot spawned on the ground. We have debris, which are the larger ones like the fallen trees or like this one, the burned tree stump. Then we have paths, which are like roads or paths or trails going through the landscape. We have the different plants that are spawned procedurally. And inside here, sometimes we have subfolders like this one has grass. Then we have a couple props, sign, and a couple posts. And we have rocks, of course. And the most important part, we have the trees. These are actually separated into species. So this, in this case, it's sprouts. And inside here, we have different variants. The burned variant, we have the dead variant, and the regular ones. Okay, and this folder structure is actually the same in all these subfolders. So if you go to materials, you will find bushes again, debris again, plants, etc. So that's all the same. Um, within procedural, these are the rule sets that I used to spawn all of this within the example map, um, which also will be used in your own map to spawn these assets. So let's have a look at the outliner itself. Within the example map, you see a couple of folders. Um, there's a background, which are background mountains. Let's go up so you can actually see them. There's a couple of background mountains back there. Those are just like static meshes. Um, we have the lake, which is the water down here. We have the landscape itself. We have a basic lighting setup, which is actually separated into its own level. So you can turn it on and off or at your own lighting quite easily to the example map. Um, we have the procedural. So these are procedural volumes that are like around the entire map, which spawn the different rocks on the map. They spawn the trees, they spawn debris for the dead areas, debris for the burnt area, and the medium trees in between the larger trees and a bunch of larger stones. Um, Going down, then we have props, which are our little props like the sign and the posts. And we have the RVT setup, which is the volume for the landscape to render the texture. So this is the basic overview. Let's fly around here a little bit and have a look at the example map itself. We have a couple of different areas like these burned areas which is like all scorched and pretty gray and black and not a lot of life left here. Um, then the other areas we have within here are the more lush, wet areas that actually have a lot of plants growing like ferns and clover and different type of grass and moss and actually a couple of uh, alive sprouse trees like this guy. And then we have the 
the dead areas which are just like littered with debris and dead trees as you can see down here there's like a couple branches and dead bushes and a ton of detail on the ground like fallen uh, needle branches and actually dead plants as well and so look at this so the entire map is actually four square kilometers all procedurally generated nothing of this was hand placed absolutely nothing everything is generated using these volumes and the landscape material itself well, let's fly through here a little bit have a look at it and then I'll actually go up show you the road there's a road going through here it's somewhere over there i think oh here it is so these roads are um, placed using landscape splines the cool thing with landscape splines is they can actually deform the landscape and conform to it so so here we go we have a road that goes through the map And since this is using Nanite, you can see it's, it's not loading anything. It's, it's just streaming in all the high-res geometry without anything popping in. There's no level of detail or anything. It's just Nanite automatically streaming in as much detail as is needed. And if we look at the Nanite overview, there's actually an insane amount of triangle on these see it's how automatically subdividing it based on how close you get like even the trees all the needles are 3d there's no opacity maps used here at all like everything absolutely everything in here is geometry so that's something really really important to keep in mind like it's actually rendering a billion or more triangles at once streaming in all the different areas and there's like nothing, nothing gets loaded or pops in or there's like LOD levels or whatsoever. It's just Nanite constantly streaming in data from the different assets. And everything is dynamic. Like nothing of this is baked. You can just regenerate it. You can even go in and change the angle of the light like this dynamically. And it just updates. Let's make this a little, for example, let's go like a really reddish sunset type of lighting. You can see it's, it's like dynamically updates everything. Let's go back like uh, full daytime. Like this is like a noon. Let's change the lighting angle again. Let's change that back to 310. I guess we want to change back to 210. So as you can see, it's it's fully dynamic. And let's have a look at something that's really cool with this as well, because all of our products have a controller blueprint. Inside here, you can change the way the wind works within the map and all the different foliage will react to it. It doesn't matter which biome you're using all of them use the same controller so in here we have the wind intensity we have the wind speed the wind gust variation and the wind gust contrast um, there's a couple other things down here for the interactive foliage because when your player is walking and walks against the bush it actually will bend away from the player so you can set a couple of things in here and there's a water line which pretty much defines at which height within the map the water is located so all the the assets that are close to the water will actually be wet like where the water hits the object so let's have a look at the wind and increase it let's set say this is the set this to six you can see the trees actually start moving faster like the different branches will start to move and we can add more variation to it and increase the speed and the contrast we're going to lower a little bit so we get more motion you can see it's like everything starts moving 
So this is fully dynamic. Let's reset this. I'll set this back to two. So yeah, that's that's the basic uh, example map and the basic features that are coming with our different biomes. Um, I hope you enjoyed the little overview. Thank you very much for watching and uh, see you soon.